Capcom stretches a two-hour Resident Evil game into a multi-hour experience. Think back to one of your first playthroughs of a Resident Evil game. You were probably bit, stabbed, poisoned, eaten alive, maybe even decapitated. Despite all the zombies and monsters Resident Evil threw at you, you persevered and made it to the end screen. Here you see how long it took you to complete the game. The in-game timer is a staple throughout the Resident Evil series, and Resident Evil's in-game timer is interesting. It's an example of great game design that's steeped in video game history. Back when arcades were a common sight and Pac-Man grossed more money than Avatar, gamers competed over the coveted high score. Even if you could only input three letters, it was enough to prove who was the baddest gamer on the planet. Or at least their local pizza shop. Not only were high scores a badge of honor, but they served as an incentive to get better and therefore keep pumping quarters into the machine. Many big name game studios of today started out by releasing arcade games, including Resident Evil's Capcom. But as video games moved from big arcade cabinets to small family entertainment systems, racking up points became a personal accomplishment rather than a competition amongst gamers. So how do high scores relate to Resident Evil's in-game timer? Capcom, a major arcade developer at the time, knew the importance of having a measurable performance metric for video games. But high scores lost their luster without the publicity. To address this shift, companies like Capcom began to experiment with new ways to engage players and keep them coming back for more. That's why in 1996, Capcom turned to the in-game timer with Resident Evil, which provided players with a new goal to strive for, completing the game as quickly as possible. This added an extra layer of challenge to the game and gave players a reason to replay Resident Evil in order to try to improve their time thus turning one of the first instances of survival horror into a speed game. And speed games were incredibly common before Resident Evil. Many people cite Dragster released on the Atari to be at least the first speed run. But there's been racing games that time lapse or games where each level has a limited time, but these are nothing compared to Resident Evil's in-game timer that records the entire game. Unlike, say, Super Mario Bros, where when you finally save Princess Peach, you only see the timer for the final level. Resident Evil's in-game timer is just another form of the high score. Instead of flexing all the papers you can deliver, Resident Evil encourages you to become the fastest member of stars. STARS Go back to when you first beat any Resident Evil game. Doesn't matter, could be 1, 2, Biohazard Village, new or old, doesn't matter. Beating the game and seeing a playtime that's way into the double digits isn't uncommon. But by showing the playtime, Resident Evil challenges you to do better. And if the timer alone wasn't enough, some Resident Evil games give you an actual grade followed by a snide remark. Jill, you did a fine job. Thanks. Didn't think I was gonna get graded as I fought for my life, but okay. The timer is bait to try to get you to replay that Resident Evil game. You see it and think, nah, I can beat that. On your next playthrough, maybe you shave off a few hours because you know the puzzle solutions, then you play it again and save even more time now that you've learned how to quickly dispose of enemies. Before you know it, you've cut your original playtime in half. Resident Evil's end screen allows you to plainly see your progress. It's an example of how something so small can have a huge impact. Because without Resident Evil's end screen, there's no cue to start again. Until you start trying to beat Resident Evil games as fast as possible, you won't realize that Capcom basically creates two different games with each Resident Evil release. Depending on your approach, Resident Evil's experience is just so different. When you take your time and search every room, you'll finish Resident Evil with tons of ammo and healing items. But on a speedrun attempt, you might defeat that final boss with only a few bullets to spare. Capcom had to be very deliberate with how they spread out Resident Evil's resources. New players shouldn't struggle too much while dedicated players can't have their hands held. But Capcom walks this line flawlessly through consistent enemy and item spawns. If you're trying to beat a Resident Evil game in under 3 hours, you'll need to know the game like the back of your hand. You'll need to know exactly what items are essential versus what you can skip. But the only way this is possible is for Capcom to make each playthrough of a Resident Evil game consistent. Resident Evil does this by having enemies start in fixed positions. This allows veteran Resident Evil players to anticipate how enemies move and react. A new casual player may cautiously tiptoe around a corner out of fear of what lurks on the other side, while the experienced Resident Evil player might be able to run through that same hallway completely blindfolded. This is vastly different from a lot of other games. You could reload a save point in Halo a hundred times and the enemies will always behave differently. Or think about wild Pokemon encounters when stepping into the tall grass. 
Some argue that enemies with static starting positions make Resident Evil boring and predictable, but consistent enemy spawns really only helps experienced Resident Evil players looking to perfect their runs. Enemies react to your movements, so if your movements are the same, then so will the zombies. Consistent enemy starting positions won't really affect the casual Resident Evil player because they're not trying to pull off specific lines. Static enemy spawns were incredibly common in the first few Resident Evil games because each room was individually loaded, so it could have been a mechanic that was born from hardware limitations. But even with more sophisticated engines, Capcom still chooses to make Resident Evil games with fixed positions. There's always going to be that four-legged molded on this bridge in Resident Evil 7, or this zombie here will always be chilling in Resident Evil 3. It's just now because later games have no obvious load zones, the zombies move around freely after being discovered. But knowing when and where enemies spawn in a Resident Evil game is enough for players to route the quickest path even if their movements become random after the first encounter. One major change that started with Resident Evil 4 was random item spawns. In past Resident Evil games, players could depend on what items spawned where, but that is no longer the case. While some item spawns in Resident Evil 4 stay the same across playthroughs, the majority are not, leaving players to try to route on the fly. Resident Evil's in-game timer is one reason I keep coming back to the series. The in-game timer turns Resident Evil from a horrifying game to a ballet emphasizing graceful, deliberate movement. 